Thank you, Caroline. Um, I don't want to break in at all on what you're thinking. So um, this is sort of a personal reflection, really, f by me on uh, where I feel that um, where we may be going. So um, we have all had the chance to consider how the pandemic has impacted us for good or ill. For some, we feel that we have escaped as if through the flames. For others, it, is as if, if it has been as if we have been in the furnace and there will be shades in between these extremes. Whatever, we will all have been changed in some way and God is in the business of transformation. For many, there have been already been massive changes in terms of working patterns, the way we socialize, how our children are educated, our choice of jobs, leisure activities and travel, our use of technology. Some have decided to reorder their priorities. Some have had this imposed upon them. And maybe we have been confronted with issues we have not considered before. Maybe we have been brought up short by the vast disparities in our society and across the world, shown starkly in terms of vaccine availability and treatment of COVID. Maybe we have seen with fresh grat gratitude that our society does protect the weak and provide health care free of charge to the majority. We noticed that when cars and planes ceased, we could breathe fresh air and hear just how loudly the birds sing. I know that in Studland Bay in Dorset, no boats with chains and anchors were allowed. So the seagrass has grown back and seahorses have returned and are breeding. It seems that everyone's experience has been different a mixture of positives and negatives. But a question remains, how can we best use the changes in our lives and to our perceptions to change gear in our response to God's call to build his kingdom here on earth? We must seize the day and ask him afresh how can we make the most of the time allotted to us here? We must trust him to guide us, to hear his prompting. We say that we want to be like Jesus. Most of us are quite happy with the idea of being loving, gentle, giving. We love his teaching and healing and wish we could do that too. But at the heart of the gospel, Jesus is a revolutionary. He came to change the status quo, to upset the apple cart, to set the cat among the pigeons, and to hold a mirror up to his society. We, Jesus' disciples, are called to be different to mainstream culture, not to fit in seamlessly, but to show a different path or way. Andy Saunders spoke to us about giving social, th social action higher priority to imitate Jesus in our words, our example and our public stance. So what issues or people do you believe deserve your attention? What or who is captivating your interest and concern? Are they close to God's heart too? What would he have you change? promote, challenge, find out more about, write letters, financially support, or pray for. Remembering above all that God is goodness itself. Our God is love. Grace is poured out upon us. We are to forgive and not hold grudges, pray for our enemies, and seek God's kingdom in all. This world is precious to him and should be to us. Just maybe God is providing the opportunity through the changes brought about by this devastating global pandemic for all humankind and especially the Christian church to up its game 
oppose injustice in all its forms and walk more humbly and more carefully upon this earth.